So, Jen? What's up? Yeah. <laughs> so, on this episode of Moments with Merv, I got my sister here, got Jen here. What's going on? So, today we're going to continue our game where we play overrated versus underrated. So, if you're not familiar with it, this is where I give out a bunch of topics to my guests and we discuss from our perspectives. Is it overrated or underrated? And remember, these are our own. I hop right into it. Jen, overrated versus underrated? Waking up early in the morning. Underrated. <laughs> uh, very underrated, very much so. Even though I hate it with a passion, <sighs> but it. it's like you get so much stuff done, you can like do more things for yourself, one. Yeah. And just get more stuff out, like, out the way. It's like, oh, I have a free day. Like, yeah. you know, <laughs> get to do more stuff. Just. You definitely do, like, I mean, you can really maximize your time. Exactly. And, like, that's why I love getting up in the morning because, like, A, it's more daylight, for one. And then, two, a lot of people won't get up, so that's not get my, uh, my breathe, my it's peace time. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's, like, more time to just focus on yourself or, like, do some reflection, journaling, or anything like that, devotion, whatever you do. Just time for yourself that you might not get the rest of the day, hectic day you get. Exactly. Because the more time goes on, the more people wake up, the more distractions you get. Mm-hmm. This is why I love the morning. And that's why it used to be so funny to me where, like, someone would text me good morning at 10, 30, 11. And I'd be like, yo, I'm up for, like, three hours right, already. Like half day. Hours. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you. <laughs> day. <laughs> day was over. Day over. <laughs> exactly. The day's almost over. Like, we're just not waking up. Okay. Yeah. It's like, whatever. I what? knew someone that was actually like that. Like, when it was, like, 8 o'clock, you're like, oh, the day is almost done. Like. <laughs> what am I doing wrong? Yeah, like some people really start early in the morning, really which early. I actually commend them because again, like you get a lot of stuff done, and then I honestly it gives you the opportunity to be uh, more available with for others later on in the day. Cause like exactly. when your day doesn't start till you know ten thirty, eleven o'clock, twelve p.m. Well, now you've already canceled out like half the people because their morning already started, mm-hmm. and then like when you're at the peak of like getting busy is when everybody gets done with everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like where they might want to have time with you in that, you know, let's say 7 to 9 p.m., 10 p.m. range, well, you're still in motion because your day started way later yeah. compared to theirs. So it's like, it kind of blocks out that um, that opportunity, you know what I mean, just mm-hmm. to uh, hang with somebody, which is why I really always try to get up early in the morning because, yeah, it does allow me to get um, accomplished more. But it provides a bit of time block for if I want to do something and if I want it to be available, if I want it to be available. Want it, okay? <laughs> but sure, if you were here, if I wanted to be available, I would have the opportunity. <laughs> like, but some people, you know, like they think just because you have a bit of free time that it's, it's their time. time. Right. <laughs> it's my time. It's my time. Right, not you time. Not we time. My time. Yeah, I got to figure out how I want to, you know, go about it. And how we can, you know, structure. Because again, some people just like want a lot of time and just like yo. Gotta like, pay me for it. Right. <laughs> I'm like, I want time too. Like <laughs> Exactly. Like Yeah, I think um I, I think a lot of people don't like waking up in the morning just because like they they have this mindset where it's like I need to get all my sleep. And I don't this I don't I get it but I don't but it's like if you go to bed at ten PM then it's like why you need twelve hours? <laughs> <laughs> But like, cause then you'll feel even more groggy because you're getting too much sleep. Cause like that's a thing too. Like yeah. they stay shoot around six, seven, eight. Mm-hmm. Eight's even pushing it. Eight's even definitely then. pushing it. It's like <laughs> six, six, seven hours. I would say, have you ever laid down in the bed and like your mind is open and you think about all the stuff you could be doing while you're laying down? Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> man, is this this? I'm like, man, I should be studying like that or okay. yeah. sleep. <laughs> study yeah like <laughs> it'd be like bro it's a few times where it's just like the the mind would just be like oh uh, right like, I just like go <laughs> like i'd be like in the middle of the night or like late i'm like i suddenly had the urge to get all my priorities and stuff together like <laughs> i want to get my life together in five minutes like yeah you know, like, like i need to do this 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 like that's all like in the uh in the mornings like i try to have like uh it's one alarm but it's two alarms so like i'll have like a 720 or 740 alarm and that's just to wake the mind up. Yeah. Just so I can be like, all right, what do I need to do for the day? Well, how do I need to structure, you know, how I'm about to get things done? And then after that, I'll have the actual alarm to, like, get up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, like, now it's time for me to actually get out of bed, you know, give you time to wake up, to get the body, like, uh, today's the day, another day. And I'm like, okay, relax a little bit. Another alarm. Oh, time to get up. I can't stay here no longer. Like, <laughs> I'll, get, I'll be late if I do. Exactly. Like, that's my life will start late. Right. <laughs> <laughs> my life. Oh my goodness. Okay. Overrated versus underrated. Sports. <laughs> mm. 
I know it. I, in terms of what, like just in general, like yeah, participants, sports overrated. Even though I'm oh, really, because <laughs> it's like because uh, it's sport. Like this whole world, I feel like revolves around sports. Like yes. every time you go on Fuck Instagram, work. it's something about like this. The other day, talking about the World Series, and then like another basketball player doing this, or it's like, oh, somebody got drafted here. I'm like, or some athletes doing this. I'm like, okay, yeah. <laughs> sports, 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 sports. I'm like, it's a this world revolves around sports. Gambling too, especially like I heard so many. Oh my gosh, I just bet this much. Oh my gosh, I lost this much. I'm like, million dollar industry. Gee, oh my million gosh, it's like these these, like and especially in college sports, which is so unfortunate that they. Do. College athletes don't get paid, but it's like they generate millions. March Madness, for example. Oh my gosh, mm-hmm. college basketball is one of the most watched sports, like because it's just the the upcoming generation of of athletics and also who who's the next NBA or WNBA or next like pro athlete. Like yeah. they're basically like gearing them up for that. So it's like you're watching who has potential, and also just these big teams are so competitive. Like all these athletes coming in, like who has potential, who's doing great things, like who has potential to go here, like you know. <laughs> it's, it's people make so much money off sports. Oh my yeah, God, this world. That's so why I'm glad that the uh, the NIL allow you know at, uh, athletes to at least earn a little bit of money off their name and like yeah. A lot of them got paid as soon as that. Oh, bro, the quarterback from Alabama had checks coming in before he threw a ball. Jesus, <laughs> like. like that's why I do like uh, the opportunity that they have provided to allow athletes to yes. at least earn some money. So you might not work, but if you are you know an athlete and especially a stud. Uh, University, then you at least had the opportunity to do something. Yeah. And if you are good, even at like a smaller school, like if you market yourself well, like companies will find you. Yeah. And especially if you got a decent uh, following base, mm-hmm. they'll figure something out. Yeah, because people always trying to promote brands or something, like mm-hmm. to get whatever the business they have, and like athletes will help them bring in more business, something like that. So it's definitely, you can find something. <laughs> Literally. I was say, because honestly, like, <clears throat> Everybody just want that, you know, that ROI, that return on their investment. And, like, through the athletes, that is a great way because, like, athletes are a great channel to, like, the other community. Mm-hmm. So, like, if, let's say, one of our close uh, businesses around here, you know, reached out to athletes on our campus, mm-hmm. like, that one connection can spread to, like, 20 or 30 or 50, Absolutely. depending on how many people y'all actually know. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, it's like, it's, it's things of that nature where it's like, oh, yeah, you know, my friend, you know, they said well, I should come here. So, now I'm here. Is that, then to the company, exactly. it's just like, ah, let me continue to do that, you know what I mean? Which is kind of why I think it's underrated. Okay. <laughs> okay. Only because, like, it, it, I mean, people have noticed how uh, athletes are a great channel to market Absolutely. and are, you know, bridges between the other consumer that a company might not know. Mm-hmm. But I think, too, that people forget about the principles that we learn in uh, sports, like discipline and, yep. you know, teams and, you know, leadership. Like, those are things that you kind of get in like a work-like environment and don't realize it's work because mm-hmm. like if you don't hate the sport, you enjoy what you're doing. You, know? <laughs> exactly. you enjoy what you're doing. Exactly. And it's like for some of us, um, like some of those roles, like they just come about. Like isn't uh, Jen a captain for track? Uh, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> things like that. You, yes. you can't, you can groom a little bit, but you got to be built. You got to be born with something like that. You yeah. know what I mean? Because like when you can, you know, accomplish tax, but not only just accomplish tasks, and you can show that, and like how you did it, why you did it, like that stuff is like a natural, you know, born element, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's like, being a leader is a kind of like, I feel like it's a natural born talent that some people, you know, forget about, because like, if you can't lead a group, it's like, you know, what are you doing, you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. like, you, you're either the leader or the follower in a sense, like, whichever one, you're either gonna be that, like the sheep or wherever. <laughs> Lion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally, because like, like through sports, I mean, a you see who's good at what, mm-hmm. but then you also can see who can take charge. Exactly, exactly. And I think that's what people uh, kind of like missed out because like some people are listen on my team um, at high school, we were not good. Okay, none in four years. <laughs> <clears throat> now a few of us did okay. Uh, you know, uh, we made our way to college. We mm-hmm. got you know all league or all Ohio accolades, or we got some people who went to D one, mm-hmm. but not everybody was good on the team. None in four years. <laughs> but <laughs> we had a few captains on the team who may play a bit, but not a lot. But because they know how to lead a, uh, a group of individuals and be very influential, that's what put them in that position, you know, to be a leader. So it's like, though they may not be able to lead on the field, but they might be able to uh, lead in the office space. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I feel like that's why it's kind of like underrated. Yeah, because like, what's a face? Um, especially with like marketing, because mm-hmm. um, I just seen something with. Um, 
with Kobe and the new drink body armor. Mm. Oh my gosh, that blew up ever since they he whatever return on investment he got from that. Um, like they were saying how smart of a guy he was. Like he made really good investments and stuff like that. And like I was like, oh my gosh, I just have a body armor. Like you know, <laughs> I was like, oh Kobe, you know, it's like athletes bring in like a different perspective because it's like people know the athlete and it's like whatever they're trying to introduce it's like they're connect them with that it's like oh mm-hmm. they do it i'm gonna do that too so it's like exactly. oh it's so smart it's <laughs> so smart oh my gosh I'm athletes asking. are gold mine exactly because like imagine you know somebody being influential and they're smart right that makes them credible exactly. right so now it's like okay well I like you anyways because you're a cool person or you're doing what I want to do. Right. But not only are you cool, but you are also knowledgeable about, you know, what you're speaking of. Mm-hmm. So now that means that adds a bit of credibility to you. So right. now it's they like, okay, you. exactly. And that's what companies want. They want to be able to build trust with the consumer. Mm-hmm. And the best way to do it is through that bridge. Exactly. So if I trust this bridge, if this bridge can, you know, I get from point A to point B over this bridge, then I can trust, you know, point B, which is the uh, company. Mm-hmm. And that bridge is the athlete. athlete. Yeah. <laughs> I see. Okay. So it's I like, will, yeah, that's a good point. If, that's why I'm like, it's, it can be over it to an extent. Yeah, by to the, an extent. The way, um, you know, people, some people go about it, especially... Like, you know, we shouldn't have to care about what everything that goes on in their lives. Yeah. Like, oh, my gosh. Some of the things that they do, uh, everyone does. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like normal, like, oh, such and such just did that. Like, and it's, if this person did it because they have status or a celebrity, it's like, you know how many people is doing that around here? That's normal it's stuff. It's normal. You know? like, like, they, they have human. lives. <laughs> <laughs> they, they have make lives. Mistakes. They're, they make dumb decisions, too. Like, yeah. yeah. Well, the issue with that, too, is like, I mean, I guess they're put on a higher standard yes. because of their status or whatever yeah, right. they, what they do mm-hmm. but it's like it kind of give or take because i mean there's like some ceos who's like making what they make in some in some aspects mm-hmm. right but they don't have that same um uh what do you want to say like attention you mm-hmm. know as much as athletes do yeah like, athletes are on tv yeah so that's They're really separate constantly broadcasted like everything that they do is watched basically exactly and I, I know they hate it i know that's <laughs> that's not that should no one should be glorified in that sense so much other than God, but like exactly because you, you're basically worshiping that person. What they do, like trying to mimic what they do, or like I'm constantly watching them, like that got to be driving you crazy. So I know, yeah, it's like, like man, I can't do nothing without someone watching me. <laughs> like that feeling, I mean, it must not be fun. They can't. It's like literally can't move. Like everything they do is a is a movie or a news story. Yep. Like <laughs> oh, what's in the what's in the shade room today? Like oh my god. Like, <laughs> What's the face fell today exactly. on the sidewalk? Like literally, I just can't. I can't even make a mess. <laughs> right, like, I can't even be. I can't even make a mistake and like learn, be with it myself. Like live it myself. Yeah. No, someone else knows, and everybody else will know. I might say somebody's got paid because they know. Yep. Yeah. It's, oh my gosh. Like, like T pages or like, like gossip pages. Like make money off exposing and like gossiping about someone else's life, which is. So it's very, it really is. It's hey, like, that's how TMZ got rich. <laughs> <laughs> Just following people. Right, and taking pictures. Oh, so annoying. All right, bet. Overrated versus underrated? Being busy. Hmm. I'm going to say. I'm going to say. It is. Because you can be busy, but not productive. So I would yeah. say. <laughs> um, being busy, I would say overrated. Be, being productive underrated because yeah. you can do so much stuff in a day and get nothing done. Like, <laughs> yeah, really, <laughs> like, really. You can say like, "Oh, I'm busy," but it's like you're not getting anything that you need to do for yourself or whatever you're getting done, like um, academic wise or anything like that, job wise done. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh, like being busy and productive does not equal the same thing. It really doesn't. But, <laughs> and I'm saying because you said that, I'm gonna actually say overrated as well. Now, I'm a little biased to this because I be busy, but I'm one of the people who actually have things to do. Mm-hmm. So it's like, that's why I feel it's kind of underrated because it keeps a bit of structure. Yeah, it does. But like like you said, like when you do a lot, but you didn't get anything done, that's what makes it overrated. overrated. Like, you, just, <laughs> you just crowded your schedule for nothing. Nothing. And like, you can't get that time back exactly. now, neither. <laughs> <laughs> now you have to work around it. It's like, man, I shouldn't have done this. should have done this instead. Yeah, I think... Like, I think when you can get organized to be busy, that makes things better. Because then you can prioritize, you know, what's more important, you know, how much time you can allocate to that activity. Is there something that you can do that overlaps while you do two things, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or, or there's like, one's overlapping, but you're not multitasking. Exactly. So, like, something simple, like if you're cooking, but you're washing clothes. So mm-hmm. instead of doing two things, at, you know, at separate times, you can have the clothes uh, autonomously wash themselves mm-hmm. while you make dinner. You know what exactly. I mean? Yeah. So it's like, 
if you can figure out how to correlate a good schedule and be really organized, then it's like being busy is actually underrated because now you're being productive. Exactly. But if you just got a lot of stuff where you just sit in for like long periods, you're like, oh, well, I got something at three and I'm done right now at one, so for that hour, I ain't gonna do nothing. Well, now you now you <laughs> wasting time. <laughs> right. like, you can get so much stuff done within that gap. Like, exactly. And being organized is very underrated. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Planning, scheduling, like time blocks, underrated. Oh my yes. gosh. They're like, what is that? Planner, <laughs> schedule. What's that for? You, oh, right. I'm like, you would maximize your time and also be less stressed because you'll have everything that you need to be written out and also in block the time so mm -hmm. you can be disciplined and also just be structured with your day so exactly. you're not wasting time. Like, you know what you're trying to get exactly. into. Exactly. Like, they got that, that famous quote where it's like, uh, failing to plan is planning to fail. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and some people really, you know, see that as underrated. But, like, planning, knowing what you're going to do next is highly important because that allows you to think about how you want to go about it while you're still being busy with the current task. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you got to kind of like flip the mindset where it's like, all right, well, I got to make sure I do this and not think about the next thing, but I know what the next thing is, so right. I know exactly where to go, you know, afterwards. Keep it on standby. Exactly. So it's like, <clears throat> as long as you're being productive while you're being busy uh, is the, the biggest thing because mm -hmm. like, while being busy, uh, you kind of still want to make sure that you're maintaining uh, a, some connections with certain people because like I know at times like I'll get busy and I'll forget like oh I'll post email this person or oh I'll post the uh, same person on LinkedIn the message you know mm -hmm. what I mean like you want to make sure you maintain those connections because you still want to keep those bridges exactly. right exactly and some people get like so busy where those bridges those bridges just burn burn like and it's even if they may have not meant to it's like you have to try to work around like busy and also just trying to organize your time because you have to kind of divide it in a way so you still maintain those like resources and like connections with people because you whenever like busy comes into mind it's like okay they, they don't want to make time for me or it's like I'm not important enough so I'm not even going to contact them right so that's where it gets really if iffy like with people especially yeah I'm gonna say <clears throat> I'm gonna say if you're a busy person you got to kind of like uh communicate that with the other person exactly. or, or any other people because like you we don't read minds okay? right. So we, <laughs> right we don't read minds people you don't know what they're exactly. thinking until you ask. Mm -hmm. And like for those who feel like that person is busy and is avoiding them, well, you must ask as well and let that open line of communication, you know, kind of just flow. So this is where y'all can mm -hmm. kind of get on the same page and get into, you know, a common ground. Exactly. Now, I know the thing is like with a bunch of people, like <laughs> the interpretation of what busy is, yeah. it really fluctuates. It does. Because like what somebody might see as busy as what they're currently doing, it might not be the same as someone else because you know they're not exactly in that spot mm -hmm. you know what i mean so it's like that's why i just try to take some of my friends uh not on ride-alongs but like on ride-alongs just like you know come see what murph does today like i really have my best friend um one day really spending the whole day with me because mm -hmm. she's like oh we never hang out i hate you i'm like you don't hate me you love me she's like but you're never around i said okay bet i'm gonna show you what my day-to-day -day is right so i made her i got her at 8 a.m because that's when i used to go run i used to actually run a little earlier but i that's really good time underrated too exactly but. <laughs> I, I picked her up at 8 a.m we went worked out then we went you know had a little lunch brunch or whatever that took her to um our like investment house at airbnb before we sold it i took her there so she walked the rooms with me she talked to the guests with me she watched me as i fixed a few um like beans or whatever because they're kind of like broken mm -hmm. and she watched me do that <clears throat> then we went to my job so i can go see what they wanted but i wasn't like clocked in but mm -hmm. i just want to see what they wanted because they called me so uh, we went over there then she sat with me while I did DoorDash, and we did that for like a few hours. So we were just riding through cities, and like we we're just pointing out stuff, you know, looking at houses and things of that nature. Just she can get an idea of like what my day to day is. Mm -hmm. And then I actually then we went back to the house and we kind of just like chill afterwards. But she seen I was still on my computer, like rummaging through my YouTube or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, still trying to edit videos and edit like podcasts and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So like that was to show her exactly what I do. So mm -hmm. when she thinks that I'm just avoiding her, I'm like, no, bro, this was you know what I do right and the thing is that was like a lighter day oh, geez. <laughs> that, that was wasn't even like the meat of it <laughs> exactly now, I told her I was like had I actually had to do everything I need to do I'm like you wouldn't even be here I was right about now. to say you want me to catch up <laughs> you wouldn't even be here right now I'm like I will left you right at home and we would be having the same uh, <laughs> oh <my. laughs> but I think like um doing like a ride along method I think it's very beneficial because it really lets that person get in your shoes yeah mm -hmm. and like I think people, I think it's kind of underrated too. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm like, because people's lives are so different from like, 
my life is different from your life, different from such and such life. Like it's so because we also have different um, responsibilities yep. and like different personal things that we need to get done. Like my major is different from yours, so we exactly. have different. Oh my gosh, people, certain certain people need your time. Like different people need your time. You need to dedicate certain hours to this specific thing. Like it's so different, so you gotta understand where people's standpoints are. So it's like exactly that's mm -hmm. why I hate when people say oh. Like the athletes be having some time. I'm like, do you know their schedule? You, I'm like, oh, where? <laughs> do you know their schedule? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like oh you, you're kidding. Like, <laughs> but again, those like the people who major in like, you know, software or <laughs> or spoons or something. Like they got free time. And they like, <laughs> like, oh my god, like they got free time. Yeah, like y'all don't understand. Like, they don't understand oh the athletes' gosh. schedule. They don't understand the classes that all these uh, the STEM people have oh to take. My like gosh. those science and medical and engineering. Class. Oh, I could not. I, I'm, I'm like, surviving. Exactly. I'm surviving. like, I'll be going through some of y'all books. I said, oh no. <laughs> I don't know what that <laughs> I'm is. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can have that. <laughs> Yeah, it's a challenge, but, you know, it'll pay off. I might say, in the long run. Yeah. So. Run and run it is. Exactly. <laughs> and speaking of that run, overrated versus underrated. College education. Oh. <laughs> so we're talking about the runs. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> College education. I'm going to say overrated. Yeah. <laughs> because I know, like, um, like my mom, for example, she has a really good job at a pharmaceutical company that mm -hmm. she's surrounded by people with college education and she does not have one and still doing a, probably even a better job than all the people with degrees. So it's right. like, you can get, like, different opportunities without a um, college education, like, despite, like, it's, like med anything medical-wise you have to go mm -hmm. to, because you're not going to touch me without any yeah, type yeah, of, yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> but, like, other, other than that, it's like, <laughs> Uh, other than medical and stuff like that, um, you can definitely, like, with connections, I'm telling you, if you know the right people, you can get anywhere. Oh, my gosh. So, it's like, I feel like with that, connections is the major point because college education is, like, unless you're really going for, like, medical, yeah, or like do you really or need it? Like, yeah. like where you, unless you have someone else's life or, yeah, in your hands, basically, like, with, yeah. like if you're sending someone to jail, you want to try or you have someone's, like, actual, like, you have to save them from something like yeah. that. Yeah. Other than that, like business, mm, I want to say education. Business. Education, yes, because you go, you go. I mean, you teach someone else's child or yeah. whoever. Like you need to know what you're doing, but even then, it's like, yeah. you know, come coming up with like lesson plans and stuff like that. But like, I want to say because like honestly, I learned a lot of stuff from YouTube University. Yeah, I was about to say YouTube has <laughs> everything. I was like, anything you really need could be and on YouTube. YouTube I'm like somebody who done went to school for what you're looking for, they didn't probably made a few videos. They didn't, yeah. whether it's exploded or not, but they, it's probably somebody out there already talking about yep, what you are. Exactly. So like anything, I like you said, I think anything that requires you to be, maybe not so much a worker of the state, but like where somebody' life is at hand, or you're kind of a worker of the state. So mm -hmm. like you know, yeah, to be a teacher or to be in law or to be in medical. Like I feel like those areas, like you definitely need mm -hmm. formal education because like you know somebody else is depending on you and i heard too i'm not sure how uh, exactly true it is but like for people who uh teach special education uh children like you must uh teach them correctly mm -hmm. or you can be held liable in like a uh, lawful way i can i definitely believe that yeah, yeah. cuz my brother he's uh that's what his uh major is in so mm -hmm. he's he's going in to be a special education teacher so he was telling me he's like yeah bro like you got to be on point with it and you got to do it correctly or you can go to jail for something yeah like because that. they're they're rely all their motor skills and like um gross motor skills and stuff like that they're dependent on you like how they do basic functions and going day to day and like and learning things is on you so it's exactly. like you got to know what you're doing so I'm like, yeah, stuff like that, uh, you definitely need a college and a formal education because, like, somebody's life outside of yours is depending on you. You. Whew. Now, other stuff. <laughs> like, uh, YouTube, you can uh, probably, okay. yeah, you can probably YouTube, you Google that, that, right? Like, you know, and certain read jobs, book. exactly. Because <laughs> certain, like, occupations, like, the experience is uh, really what it is. Like, mm -hmm. let's just say for marketing, like, a key principle in marketing is a being creative and being able to uh, identify a need of a consumer. Mm -hmm. Like, if you could talk to your friend and figure out why she's upset, <laughs> you just identify the need exactly. of the consumer. It's, it's like, in a way, yeah, because that's still it's still the same principle. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like, it's really about how do these key principles and these skills can translate across industries, mm -hmm. and that's why, like, for some occupations where it's like you know this person in ticket sales, and then now they're in car sales, and now they're selling you know pharmaceutical products like every product they're sold that they're selling is different but the principle is still there mm -hmm. and the other key principle is actually understanding what the consumer needs mm -hmm. 
So it's like certain things you can get just from the experience if uh, being under people who've done it before you. That's where mentors are so important. Yeah, oh my gosh, I swear. Because they, they're they giving you all the stuff that they wish they knew, they already know, yep. and it's learning. And <laughs> it's like, it's, it's, oh my gosh, it's like a plethora of like information. Like That's the, <clears throat> one of the ultimate ways to like know like how to work through things in like your way and also having the knowledge that someone else like previously has already done it that's that i think mentorship is really underrated, underrated. you know <laughs> underrated because you're having that person that's already been through it and telling you how to do it and do it better so it's like yeah ultimate like, like I'm saying, apparently, Summer Walker, some of y'all uh, meant <laughs> to learn no, my experience. Yeah, my um, mistakes. you need to change that Michelle Obama song. Strong, you know? Like, right. I say she's not strong, but it's like, uh, you know, yeah. we all kind of go into the same thing. We like, have some that, better leadership. That album just dropped, you know, we kind of all feeling that right now. Well, that's literally what all City I girls. see. Exactly. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, gosh, no. Then the ones I can consistently I see, I'm like, y'all can find some better some, people to follow. Somebody, like. like Someone Come on now, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's somebody else who's doing what you want to do, exactly. and you might even reach out to. That's underrated. Like someone that doesn't get as much attention as they should, because they probably have a better message to send other than what twerking and doing all this, taking someone's money, <laughs> oh, run his bag. Like oh my gosh, like there's other stuff in the world out there other than that. Legit. You know, like, city girls. Oh, I'm gosh. like, hey, man, some people got their preferences, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, we just gonna say as a quick memo. Find a good mentor. Please. A qualified <laughs> mentor. mentor. Like, if you if you go to your parents and say, this is my mentor, and they don't like that, that should be an issue. Mm. That should be a uh, defining moment where it's like, okay, maybe I shouldn't want to rob that person. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I shouldn't want to cheat, okay? You want to make sure that a person that you have as a mentor is actually going to provide value to you. Uh -huh. And actually, <laughs> even especially if you connect with them, um, actually be able to respond and, you know, build that relationship. Because, like, some mentors, like, you know, some people don't like to provide value because they feel like you're not offering anything. But then some people just want, you know, that relationship, that mm -hmm. bond. So, like, for someone who's seasoned, just having that opportunity to speak to a younger generation, mm -hmm. they love that stuff. I, I personally love that stuff. Like, with uh, with athletic training, we have, like, internships. So, mm -hmm. how I was a freshman, there was a senior um, student, like, that would uh, always help us or, like, the grad students. So, it's like, now I'm I'm the senior student. Right. Like, all these freshmen, I'm like, oh, my gosh, I get to help them with all the stuff that I wish I knew and like helping them like um like little opportunities here and there that i wish i had and like telling them okay maybe you should try this instead like this helped me or um like future reference like helping them with like different classes or different skills they're like oh can you help me with this i'm like oh it's my time i can show <laughs> like, i'm gonna give you all the knowledge i can like because i like anything that i wish that i knew i always make sure someone else that is in my mm -hmm. position that's in the going in the future that they know so like mm -hmm. they can pass it down like I love. I always love helping people. That's like that's why I'm in the major as well. Like, yeah, man. it's like a great feeling when you just help somebody and you know that you help yes, them. Yes, and it's like they can always like, oh, Murph helped me today. Like, or they'll always reference you. Like, oh, a few years back, I had this amazing mentor, Murph, and like you'll be talked about in a um, positive, um, uplifting way, which is always like really good to hear. Like, exactly. people talk about you in a positive, respectful way. That's like the ultimate like reputation that you can build for yourself when people can say you're credible and that you're trustworthy mm -hmm. like that gets around it's like oh, i heard your name from this person this person this person you did such and such like come in for an interview or come in like we want you to speak or something like that like opportunities exactly. line up like you never know how changing one person's life can change your oh life gosh. in a large for way <clears throat> and i think that's something um, everybody should take note of if you haven't already <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and wrap the show up i'm glad my sister was able to be here I, I love the opportunity. It was very fun, especially me and you were. We always had that connection, so it was like us talking like regular. It was regular. <laughs> like I was saying, y'all most definitely hear her again in the future. We'll probably try to get her in one more time before um, I guess graduation happens. Um, you know, wherever that, wherever that's called. <laughs> <laughs> but y'all definitely hear from her in the future. So I want.